For the base cake, start by rolling out your fondant and after rolling it out, cut according to the measurement of your cake or your dummy, depending on what you want to use. For the base cake, I am using 16 inches dummy and I have just measured the length and the width, which gave me 16 inches length and then 6 inches width. So I'm using the measurement of the length and the width of the partitions to cut the fondant, okay? So after cutting, all you need to do is apply your shortening on the body of the dummy. If you are using a cake, it should be buttercream before placing the fondant. Now I've been able to place two sides of the dummy and I'm trying to create a sharp edge there. Now, I am not going into much details as I'm going to still place another fondant on top. But I just want to use this to show you how to make the sharp edge. Okay? That is the side sharp edge. That's what I just demonstrated now. But I'm going to be doing the rest behind camera. Next, you measure the upper part of the cake or the dummy and also use the same measurement to cut out your fondant and then place on top. Now I have just placed it, so with the help of my two smoothers, I will drag them together and begin to create a sharp edge also at the edge. Now, like I said, the side sharp edge may not really be very important, but the upper one is very important, okay? as we are not going to cover the upper one again but the sides are definitely going to be covered again okay so now you are looking at what i am doing this is exactly how i'm going to do it until i go around now the upper part is ready the next thing is to now line the board using your fondant and trimming off the excess using your craft knife next you roll out your pink fondant and now remember we have taken a measurement before and that same measurement is what i used in measuring the pink fondant for the side of the cake okay now give it a partition of 3 cm apart as you can see me lining it and i am going to be doing this left and the right side of the rolled out pink fondant And after that, I'll use my scraper and begin to create the line with the help of my ruler. Remember, I am not trying to cut it off. Now, what am I doing? I am just trying to create a brick wall. And for me to make sure that the bricks are equal, I had to measure. Now, we have many things you can use in creating this brick wall. You can use your mat. And you can use uh, some of these uh, rolling pins that have the some rolling pins that has the wall. So now, after the horizontal part, I'm now going on the vertical part. For the vertical, I am taking two inches spacing. Remember, I the side I took cm, three cm apart. The up and down now, I am taking two inches apart. Okay? Now, there is something you must note. What you did on the upper one is not what you are going to do on the second line. 
So on the second line, all you need to do is to mark in between the upper lines. Okay? Now I am ruling the upper line. Now the line following the upper line, you must give your marking in between the spacing. That is the only way you can create the brick wall. So you can see what I'm doing now. And be very careful not to cut out your fondant or maybe cut or separate it. Else it will be difficult for you to place it on the cake. Because it will be scattering and tearing apart. And for you to achieve this neatly without that, you must make sure that you have a thick rolled out fondant. Your fondant must not be too flat. Okay, so you can use your description to create the in-between lines. But if you know you cannot guess it, use your ruler to do the measurement. Alright, and after that, I'm going to do four more as we have four partitions on the cake. And I'm going to be placing it round the cake, trimming off the excess where it is necessary. Note. After designing it this way to get your bricks, set them aside to at least stand for 30 minutes to one hour. Okay? So it will be firm enough by the time you want to place them on the cake. Now let's work on top of the cake. Remember we just covered the upper part of the cake. And I have this cookie cutter with me. What am I doing? I am picking out the fondant and replacing it with a darker fondant and for the fondant I am using gray color you can use black you can use any color of your choice but this one is gray and how did I get this gray I have just added my black to the white fondant and I continue mixing until I get my desired color so I didn't want it to be too dark so I decided to just use the gray you can use any color like I said. So all you need to do is pick out and replace. Okay. Use the cookie cutter. Cut out some of those uh, uh, black or uh, gray fondant. And then use the same cookie cutter. Cut out a space on top of your cake. And then replace them with the cutout from your gray fondant. Remember I'm using the same cutter to do this now this is what we have and after that we now start apply shortening on the body of your cake and begin to line the bricks the bricks you just finished working on it is almost 30 minutes now or 40 minutes it is now very firm and not falling apart at all so all you need to do is to apply your shortening again on the body of the fondant and begin to place on them okay now if on the process you notice anyone longer than the other just use your craft knife and follow it and remove that part okay and if there's any part that is not holding well all you need to do is to apply a little liquid like water or a glue like cmc and water mixture and just hold them together so this is what I did until all the four sides are covered. Now the question is, if I have measured this, why is it longer than the cake? It is longer because we were putting the scraper in between in order to create lines. And as you are doing that, you are elongating what you measured out. So that is why you have to cut off the excess after placing them on the body of the cake. Next, we are going to place the handrail. And for the handrail, you know we have some triangular parts at the edges of the cake. And because the handrail is dried, you have to do something to fold that part to make sure it matches with that part. So what do you do? You give a mark at the part where there is sugar on the rail 
and then you fold once you fold it will give you that note this mark must be with measurement you can see where i started i started almost three quarter part of the cake because i needed a door there so i took my measurement to know where i'm going to be marking on the body of my rail again i repeat where you are going to mark that is where you are going to mark to behave like you want to cut off is the part where you have the sugar on the rail the paper will now be able to hold it together when you are bending it take note of that so with the help of my glue gun i was able to attach it very firmly to the cake Now, remember I said I am going to be creating a door. I have positioned the left side of the door and I am about to position the right side of the door. I'm also going to do the same thing I, I did, okay, to do that. So, I had to take a measurement, leaving the door space, alright? And after that, I'm going to be cutting the same way I cut in order to form the triangle before placing it. So that is it. And I'm also going to be attaching it with the glue. So when I get to the edge, I found out that the rail is longer than necessary. So I had to still take measurements to make sure that it rhymes with where the other one stopped okay now i have also tried to form the triangle at the back at the back side so the next thing i did now was to get a measurement where i can cut off the excess so that the whole thing stays together by so doing i had to make sure i cut off entirely okay so that is the excess and the one remaining now we should be able to match with the one that is already there and that's how you place your handrail. So you continue applying the gum until the whole rail is well attached. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.